Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office for Tuesday, October the 3rd, 2023, with a very big, important tropical weather outlook and discussion. This one's going to be big because we're keeping an eye on Tropical Storm Philippe moving over the Leeward Islands. And then we have more tropical development chances existing in the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico, including for the northwestern Caribbean, where we could have some big time storms that could develop in the next five to ten days. Looking at the latest true color visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. This is a zoomed out view and we can see that the system is not as defined as earlier. That's Philippe that is. Uh, we can see the circulation there really elongated again because of the deep layer shear that has just been plaguing the system over the last four to five days. In fact, it is so disorganized that latest recon cannot locate a very well-defined center. And in fact, the center is moving all over the place, which makes this forecast extremely challenging thus far. However, despite the disorganization with Philippe's structure, there is still explosive deep convection happening over much of the Leeward Islands with intense rainfall flooding and even some mudslides as well as high surf in certain areas depending on where those winds actually are the strongest. Now when we take a look at the latest NHC track forecast and intensity we have winds that are at 45 miles an hour. This is moving to the northwest at 12 miles an hour. Well that's if it is. On the latest recon, it is still drifting westward, so it is going to be interesting on what their next advisory will indicate. However, this is still expected to remain a tropical storm over the next three days as this apparently, supposedly, moves northward according to with what the NHC says. But if it drifts westward, this could be on the weakening state as it gets closer and closer to the Bahama Islands in the next one to four days. But otherwise, the NHC is still forecasting that this is going to make the turn to the north, northwest, and the north over the next three days, and we will follow suit with this forecast, and it could reach Bermuda by Friday night. Again, that's according to with what the models do indicate, and this could juggle all over the place. It could move further west. It could move further east. We just don't know yet, but right now, there is that cone of uncertainty that is right on top of Bermuda, so you all there need to be aware of this system. Most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds is as follows. There is a greater than 20 to 30% chance over Bermuda that you may have tropical storm force winds as early as Friday night, Friday morning, and then, of course, further south you go, it gets earlier. So by like Wednesday night, over the open Atlantic waters. But again, if this goes further west, there could be some impacts potentially over some of the Bahama Islands. Now, when we take a look at the latest Euro model, this is the 12Z run for October 3rd. We can see where Philippe actually is on the map. And apparently this model does indicate it is going to go north. So by day three, it is approaching Bermuda there with heavy rainfall, strong winds, thunderstorms, water spouts, that sort of thing, but it's going to continue to go north with time over the next four and a half to five days. It could be approaching Nova Scotia where heavy rainfall, strong winds are anticipated. We could be looking at a powerful exotropical cyclone here on the approach to the northeast, and you all do not need any more rain at this time. And this would be Sunday morning, very similar to when Lee made landfall nearly three weeks ago. The GFS model still thinks the same thing like the Euro as we go forward in time on this. You can see over the next three days, that's where the system is going to be nearing Bermuda with strong winds and heavy rainfall. And then it's going to get absorbed into a larger scale low near Nova Scotia, as well as the extreme Northeast with heavy rainfall, flooding, strong winds. You all do not need any more catastrophic flooding, any more uh, fatalities because of all the water impacts that you have had recently and it looks like it's going to be a nuisance again as you all get prepared potentially for a subtropical or extratropical cyclone Philippe. Now that we talked about Tropical Storm Philippe, it's a good idea that we really focus on, on the Gulf of Mexico as well as the Caribbean as a lot of folks out there on YouTube have been predicting that something big could be in the making and we now have to really watch that. There is proof that I'm about to show you that we may have our next tropical storm, if not a low-grade hurricane approaching the Bay of Campeche 
from the eastern pacific so something that kind of meanders right around that um that uh, monsoon gyre or central american gyre in other words so looking at the euro this is day five on our geopotential height cyclonic vorticity this is about how much spin there is going to be in the atmosphere and the more spin there is that means what we get a tropical storm or hurricane, and that's what this model indicates. What we're looking for is something that looks like this. Yes, right there, that that X marks a spot. That's the dark spot. That's a lot of vorticity, a very concentrated amount of spin in the atmosphere, and that's what we declare as a tropical storm or hurricane. So let's move forward. What does it look like? Well, looks like um, over the next eight to 10 days, we're not gonna see much, but you never know with what the Euro is going to show in future model runs. It is already trying to spin up something here over the Bay of Campeche, over the Western Gulf of Mexico, and these waters are very warm. In fact, they are so warm, we are in the mid to upper 80s to close to 90 degrees over the Bay of Campeche, where water temperatures there are 30.5 to even 31 Celsius. So when you see something like this on the Euro model, this is the cause for some concern as this could spin up very quickly into something major. Now, what about that lovely GFS model? This is the 18Z run on the same perimeter that we use with the Euro model. Going forward in time, we can see there is Philippe moving out of the picture. And then, of course, the GFS wants to go all over the place and just kind of get out of its head. What's the matter with you, GFS? But, of course, we all know that the GFS is in fantasy land beyond the 180-hour time frame, which is about eight days. So when you look at the model here and you see, oh my gosh, there's going to be something big. Well, there's nothing big on this model, but some of the runs have been proven that like this one right here. If we go back in time, oh my gosh, the 12Z GFS wanted to spit out a major hurricane in the Caribbean, actually in the main development region, drifting into the Caribbean beyond the 300 hour mark. And we all know the GFS is going to be drunk in that sort of thing when making forecasts like this so we shall see looking at the canadian model though it is a whole different ball game we have a major hurricane spinning up in the eastern pacific that could actually get drifted into the bay of campeche into the yucatan as a big large scale monsoon gyre and where could this all head you might ask it might hit louisiana in about 10 days but there's a lot of variability that you all need to be aware of when looking at these models so don't wish that oh my gosh we need rain so bad in louisiana we just don't know yet another way we visualize this is looking at the ensemble forecast from the euro and you can see just a few members down there that are indicating a tropical storm while a lot of these are away from the bay of campeche as well as in the eastern pacific showing a major hurricane perhaps a tropical storm in the next three to five days so good news there on the euro family but let's take a look here at the gefs the global ensemble forecasting system and it shows a lot bit more of those tracks of course in the western gulf of mexico so we shall see how this is all going to develop in days to come but you know i thought of something what about the chances of a tropical depression happening within the next 10 days? This is a full forecast, and we can see that the Euro Ensemble, there's enough members to support that there could be a 60 to 70% chance that a tropical depression might be spinning or getting spicy in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Whereas, if we look at the GEFS, oh, actually, we don't have the GEFS here. I'm on something else, but look at this. There is a 30 to 40 percent chance that a tropical storm might form in the Gulf of Mexico, whereas other models are going all over the place. You bet, I bet you 50 bucks that the GFS has a 100 percent chance of a tropical storm brewing in the western Gulf of Mexico, because that the GFS in fantasy land cannot get its mind together at all when looking at the velocity potential anomaly forecast yeah the environment is somewhat conducive out there across the caribbean and the main development region but especially in the gulf of mexico so we really gotta watch with what might be spinning up 
and cooking there in the Gulf of Mexico, including for the Northwestern Caribbean. Well, if you found this video very helpful, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. And never forget to also check out my Facebook page. There will be a link in the description below this video, including our Discord server, or in other words, Discord server. Join today. There will be a link in the description below this video. It is completely free. There's no cost whatsoever. I cannot wait to meet you all and talk to you there in the Weather Force Discord server. But otherwise, share, like, and subscribe, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another update on those tropics.